We're out in uh, San Jose, California, in the home of some friends at the moment. Um, but the reason the four of us are sitting here is that um, tomorrow we're going to um, do a, a panel discussion at the Science and Nanda Valley Conference. And um, we wanted to generate some uh, video content for the Association of Professional Spiritual Teachers website. And so we thought we'd record something tonight. Uh, I'm, I may also add this to the Buddha at the Gas Pump uh, channel as an addendum to the video of the panel discussion we're going to do tomorrow. Um, but since this, is, this may also be a standalone video on um, APST, the APST website, uh, I should probably briefly introduce the people sitting here. My name is Rick Archer, and I was somewhat instrumental in the formation of APST, although not nearly as much as the woman to my left, Jack O'Keefe, who has really been the champion of this whole thing and has put in huge amounts of time and effort uh, to bring it together. It wouldn't have happened without her. Uh, and Jack is a spiritual teacher. I think her bio is, all of our bios are on APST. Um, to her left is Craig Holliday, who is one of the original Three Musketeers of uh, you know, getting together the APST. And in, in the uh, panel discussion we'll do, we'll elaborate a little bit on how the whole thing was conceived. And to my right is Caverly Morgan, who is from the Portland area these days and has done some incredible work um, with teaching mindfulness in schools. Um, and you know, when the three of us thought who uh, we would like to have as a fourth for our panel, Caverly came to mind as someone who would be a perfect fit. Um, so we're, we're really glad to have her here. Um, in, our in our panel discussion tomorrow, we have quite a wide range of topics that we'd like to cover. And I'm speaking in the future tense, but by the time you watch this, you may have actually already watched the panel discussion. Um, but we also thought that there, there are certain points upon which if, some, some people, when they first hear about our efforts with this thing, they jump to the conclusion that it's going to be some moralistic, judgmental mm. thing where we're going to, um, where, where we consider ourselves qualified to pass judgment on teachers or, and their behavior or, uh, and so on. And we, we just, we're going to emphasize from the out from the outset and probably continue to emphasize that that's not our orientation um, and that we have a very, um, hopefully a very humble attitude toward this whole project. We all feel in our own ways that it's something that's very much needed in the spiritual community, that there have been far too many um, examples of teacher misbehavior, which has caused a lot of pain and confusion and disillusionment uh, among students. And if, if we can contribute in any way to the sort of elevation of understanding of what is or, or may or may not be appropriate um, behavior by a spiritual teacher, we, we feel we'll, we will have done something significant. Um, but, not only are we not sort of adamant about, you know, many of the points that we're presenting, we, we feel the whole thing is fluid, a work in progress, something that we welcome and, and need the input and collaboration of the whole community in. Um, because everyone else's judgment and opinion is as valuable as ours may be. And even amongst ourselves, our judgments differ. There have been certain points which we've been bantering back and forth all year and not reaching an agreement on. Um, we haven't argued in a contentious way. It's been very friendly, but um, you know, we just, everyone has their subjective perspective. And, and in trying to evaluate or, or, fabric, or, or formulate a code of ethics, um, we're trying to achieve a balance between you know, our subjective perspectives um, and whatever universal standards there might be that fit our, our, our contemporary culture and ought to, be, um, ought to be respected. So one such example of something that we've had trouble reaching agreement on is the issue of relationships, romantic relationships or sexual relationships um, between teachers and students. And this is probably one of the most important points to 
consider because it's probably the area in which the most egregious violations have occurred, um, which have caused the most harm and confusion uh, among students and have gotten teachers in all kinds of hot water. <laughs> so we've, uh, we've discussed among ourselves over the previous months what would be an appropriate approach to this? How can you regulate such a thing? You know, should there never be any kind of um, romantic relationship between teachers and students? Or should there be a, a cooling off period in which the teacher-student relationship has ended, but the, the romantic relationship has not started for X number of months or years or whatever? Um, and again, there's been a, a range of opinions on this, and we've sort of each shifted our positions and and discussed it back and forth. And we thought that with you in watching this video, we'd like to just do a little bit of that in real time mm -hmm. and explain some of the processes we've gone through. And then you may see even now that we, we're not in complete agreement. Um, but I think you'll also see that none of us is rigid or adamant in our opinions. We're sort of trying to approach this in a thoughtful and, and sensitive and introspective way and you know, to learn as we go and kind of search our own conscience and, and, and our own understanding as deep as it may go to come up with something that's really going to be useful and, and helpful for people. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. who would like to s take it from there? Okay, so I'd, I'd be happy to start. And so, um, you know, as far as if, if we're looking at the spectrum of, you know, uh, teachers being able to fully be in relationship with their students, and teachers uh, having zero relationship with their students romantically, you know, I'm in that, that very conservative camp of, of no relationship. Ever. And, and did you say ever? Ever. Well, that, you know, that's an interesting question, ever. Uh, of course, you know, as a human being, there's going to be exceptions to all kinds of rules, uh, to any rule. There's going to be uh, cultural exceptions. There's going to be uh, different organizations you know, that have learned how to do that beautifully. You know, like in the, the uh, Jewish uh, tradition of rabbis, and it's very common, you know, to have, uh, you know, the rabbi be married and have, have it to be someone from within the congregation. And that's, you know, of course, absolutely acceptable. Uh, but what, what, I have, what I have done is, as a therapist, I've just taken the rules of, of traditional psychotherapists and the way you relate to to clients is you don't, you know, you don't become romantically involved. And the idea that, that is taught in graduate school is, is, the idea is it's never. Now if you look at the, you know, the exact codes and the rules, it's, this has gone over uh, many years of great debate. Uh, you know, it's, when I first uh, became a therapist, it was, I would have to wait two years from the last time I saw the client if I was wanting to date them. And so it just made it really simple that that would, probably wouldn't happen. You know, since then it's been raised to five years, and I, I'm a, a fan of this approach. By the governing body that governs Yeah, therapists. by the governing body that... that, that uh, grants yeah, and revokes licenses. Grants and revokes licenses, okay. yes. And see, to me, it makes it really simple that as a spiritual teacher, you know, I'm here, I'm showing up as a servant for my students, I'm not here looking for a date. Uh, I'm not looking for someone to sleep with. Uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not mixing those two worlds, and it keeps things radically simple. As a teacher, there's no, there's no messiness, and I can even say, you know, from a place of uh, humility, when I first started teaching, uh, you know, my life was a, It was literally a train wreck. Like I had all kinds of busyness going on outside of uh, my world of teaching. But what I found is, is because the relationships I, were, I was in were not fully stable, that that confusion bled into mm -hmm. the world of teaching. And mm -hmm. so I would show up and I'd be a little bit confused or stressed or you know, thinking about you know, what had just happened with my partner you know, at that time. And, it, it was a great distraction. And so, you know, if, when one has a conservative view, you know, it's like you take that confusion. I mean, I think we can all agree that relationships tend to be the most messy place 
in most of our lives. It tends to be that evolving edge. You know, I can see there's people you know, in the room that are smiling when I say this. Like, this tends to be where we struggle. And so it's nice if that struggle is not mixed with my teaching community, with the, with the Sangha. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's like, what are we here for? Are we here you know, to sit in meditation? Are we here to connect in the truth? Are we here to, you know, to, to step into these greater realms of consciousness? Or are we here you know, looking for a date? And there can be a lot of trouble you know, when we start to, start to mix those worlds. And I know, of course, it's not that simple, that sometimes, like as a therapist, you know, I may meet someone, I may find, oh, this person there, they're like my best friend. They're, they're coming to me, I see them fully, they see me fully. There's this connection that begins to form. There's this dynamic, I see their beauty and divinity, they see my beauty and divinity. And as a therapist, you can say, oh, well, this makes perfect sense that the two of us should now be in intimate relationship. But as soon as we start going in that direction, you know, all this potential for, for growth and vulnerability and, and a sense of you know, having a, a clean and clear, safe place, you know, all of that really quickly begins to crumble when those boundaries are crossed. And so to me, it's a very simple thing to say, I don't cross that line, and it keeps my teaching community fairly safe from my, mm. from my desire. And if my students know this as well, and they say, okay, then I, I'm not going to cross that line with Craig, and then it keeps, it, at least it keeps that realm intentionally safe. It keeps it mm. safe. And, you know, I could go on and on, but I'm, of course, you know, don't want to hog, hog the <laughs> mic here and be happy yeah. to, mm. okay. to hear. Thank you. And then sometimes your spiritual path commands you Absolutely. to break your golden rule. Absolutely. Because it will destroy the controller. It will make you fly in the face of what you believed to be a moral high value. And there is such divine efficiency when our spiritual path just says, oh, you think you like this? Okay, let's turn you upside down and we'll make you be the opposite of who you thought you were. So what do you, and give us an of, example of... Oh gosh, some of like us that. have had that path. I certainly have, have, have had that path um, when I was doing my spiritual practice. Whatever I, I held to be a clear value of, like, I would never do that. It's like, oh my God, I, I have to do it, I have to do it, I have to do it. So, so I remember, you know, there was this golden rule with my first husband. Absolutely. Absolutely. The one thing we will always keep sacred is being loyal to each other. And I knew at some point, like, spiritually, I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to leave him. I, I, know, I know I will have to choose God because I, I'm attached to him, so I'll have to choose God. And at a retreat, it was like, I'm going to, I'm going, this is where it's going to happen. This is how my marriage is going to break up. I'm going to be disloyal to this person, to, to my husband, with this person. I don't know how this is going to happen, but this is how it's going to unfold to get me out of the marriage. Uh, so every value system I had had to be destroyed in that process also. And divine efficiency unfolds like that sometimes. Um, and, and so, yeah, I mean, I was just in tears, taking off my wedding ring, thinking this is horrendous. I feel like... 35 year old virgin, like it was just so nervous, so awful, but I have to do this. I, I, I have to do this and destroy everything that I held as sacred. Now, of course, I was on a retreat as a student and he was another student, but I can see that same energy of divine compulsion pushing through in other people's lives. And sometimes it happens to a teacher also, where they're like, I don't know how this is going to happen. I don't know how we're going to get from teacher student to being two equal adults who are consenting to be together sexually. How are we going to get from here to there? And that's what I'd like the APST to do is like, how do we map that journey? How do we guide others through that journey? Thankfully, I had a milder version because I was a student and he was a student. It only broke my own marital vows. But when there's a teacher and a student, sometimes it works like this. 
And to say, you know, that consciousness will never, you know, make us break a rule like this. It's like, you know, the soon as you think consciousness won't work like that, consciousness will come up and say, ha, huh, you think you know how I work? Try this one. And that's what happens. So, so I would like us to find a way to navigate in those rare exceptions. And also for, for you know, our community to know the difference between what Craig is talking about. It's like, just know when there's desire and, and K-N-O-W, when there is desire. And that's when you take the higher ground and don't follow desire. Well, and there's, and there's a know? radical difference between a rare exception and you know, yeah. the desire. You know, yeah. There's a difference between me sleeping with yeah. you know, 35 women yeah. in, in my sanga yes. and, you know, and the coming, coming to a point of, okay, yeah. It's one relationship. We moved on into you know yeah. a deep level of commitment, yeah. you know. But I but I think what what I see more often than not as a, as a therapist is I see train wreck after train wreck after yeah. train wreck and hear these horrific yeah. stories, yeah. and so you know in you know I, I I'm willing to put my you know my vote or my sense of you know how do we go forward? I'd rather protect students than and protect teachers and the path of teachers and you know what yeah. you know teacher thinks that they're going through and they need to do with this one particular student i would much rather protect the thousand and one students than worry about the one in a thousand teachers who <clears throat> who needs to feel like they need to be married to this person or sleep with this person or invite this person back to their room to look at their special spiritual books. Yeah, and the next thing, thing. To read we're going to have dream. tantric sex and all become enlightened. And so yes, and you'll I'm, reach I'm my vibration be, and all this garbage. Yeah, yeah I'll, raise, I'll raise your vibration, you know, with yeah. my lingam or whatever yeah. silly, kind of, <laughs> silly kind of conversation we're going to have. Yeah. And, and I've heard these stories and, and to see, you know, the tremendous lifelong pain you know, that, that an individual has, mm, sure. has been open mm, and vulnerable sure. with the teacher mm. and then left the path for 10 years or 15 years or 20 years because of the tremendous, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you know, violation of trust that has happened. Mm. And so I heard of a woman who committed suicide mm -hmm. because of a violation of trust. And it wasn't even that um, overt um, a situation. It was more like she just got so disillusioned by the behavior, mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't even overtly sexual, but it was, uh, it was wanting to go in that direction and it shattered mm -hmm. her ideal vision of this person who's a well-known mm -hmm. and highly respected mm -hmm. spiritual mm -hmm. teacher, now deceased. Uh, but before we get to Caverly, I just want to, um, your statement confused me a little bit and it opens up a, a, a possible alibi for um, people mm. doing whatever they want because they feel like yeah, I need there's to, this karmic cosmic to, thing just driving yeah. me and I have no choice about it and I realize it goes against all the conventions but the devil made me do it so yeah you know. uh, yeah I, I hadn't finished it okay. so so the, the I think the point and the, the the gift that we can open together and share together and grow together on the APST is that what's the level of maturity of the teacher so if the teacher has their own needs, if they haven't transcended desire, if their own loneliness, their own shadow has not been explored at all, they will project this into their sangha. And then this is when the teacher will use any bullshit concept in order to justify their behavior. That stinks. That stinks. And that's the teacher not doing the work for themselves. But there are times when there is a mature objective scenario that is a rare exception and I would like teachers to know the difference for teachers to educate themselves is it my shadow what's going on here or is this actually divine will in somehow and how can I safely navigate if it's divine will that's the area that's not known mm. that teachers don't know the difference of when it's their own shadow and when there is absolutely a divine intervention moving them in a certain way. That's a tricky one. That's the <laughs> tricky one. And that's the immaturity that I want the APST to address through education. Let's, let's mature the sector so that there is more autonomy and transparency in how we work. And, and even, even bringing the conversation into the light, I think, is, is greatly helpful because what the, the reason that this has gone on, you know, for you know, it's probably a, a couple thousand years now, 
is that this is, it's hung out in the shadows. And so the willingness to have this conversation, to talk about it, you know, to, to bring up, you know, these the rare exceptions and to bring yeah. up when it's inappropriate, yeah. I think is a, is a helpful conversation. And, yeah. and, you know, I could stand here and say, oh, it is never, you know, appropriate yeah. ever. And of course, you know, I'm not... That's going to uh, make not, it go underground, well, you see? That's yeah. going to make... That's, and yeah, that's, and, that's, and, and to be honest, no I'm not... There. There's know, no I'm learning not, there. I'm not wired in that way to, to yeah. hold that kind of stance. But there yeah. is, you know, just a real sense of, of you know, what, what are normal expectations? If a, yeah. if a student comes sure. to a sangha and, you know, the, yeah. the teacher is, you know, it's a male teacher and he's only answering questions with the beautiful young ladies and... You know, afterwards, he's inviting them to all hang out with him at the the secret teaching after party. It's like, come on, like this yep. is, and it happens. And we we laugh, but it, it, yeah, happens. it happens, and it's yeah. and it's it happens again and mm-hmm. again, and it happens with with well known teachers, yeah. not known teachers. Yeah. It happens yeah. with with mm-hmm. Catholic priests and monks, and it's, yeah. it's 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 across the board, and it's yeah. it's it's unfortunate. Yeah, I want to give Carolee a chance yeah. to speak, yeah. and I just want to interject one really quick thing before I mm-hmm. give you a Please. chance to speak. Which is that one thing that's very confusing is that a teacher can be radiating like a lighthouse and appear to, appear to have an incredibly high level of consciousness, have you know tremendous charisma and powerful darshan and all that other stuff, and yet still have major unexamined shadow yes. areas and undeveloped Absolutely. aspects yes. of the personality, immaturities, and so yes. on that makes them act in ways that seems so completely incongruous with yes. their apparent enlightenment that yeah. it can be extremely confusing. And yeah. sometimes they act out those shadow things in secret uh, behind closed doors yeah. while publicly portraying an aura of saintliness and perfection. Yeah. Caverly. <laughs> <laughs> well. <Yeah. laughs> um, you know, one, one thing that's, yes, I have, I have witnessed that that is the case. But something that's interested me about the conversation you all have been having is um, the building of accountability and transparency. So um, I think a lot of uh, what we're witnessing these days is um, scandal that's happening when there's a teacher, often male, um, at the top of a pyramid and is untouchable based on n- not having models of shared accountability within larger communities. So there's sort of an island effect that can happen. And I saw um, recently one case, and I'm sure there's more than one, but I'm just present to this one, where um, even after a, a sexual scandal comes to light, this person still, they've become an island unto themselves and can continue to teach even though the board of directors has left them, their, you know, their own community has fallen apart. Um, and, and so I think it seems to me from the little bit I've gotten to learn about how this has formed is that what's powerful about it is that um, there's, there's not, if, if, if one's signing on to be part of this shared accountability, learning together process, it's, it's no longer possible to live in that kind of isolation. Yeah. And isolation can be very dangerous for the teacher and for the students. I mean, I, I know one case of a, a very popular teacher who just shut down constructive criticism. If, if anybody offered any, they were sent packing. Mm-hmm. And and he just kind of got more and more off into bizarro land, uh, mm-hmm. you know, of strange thinking with no quite critical feedback. No whatsoever. mirror. No mirror. No mirror. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, one of the one of the beautiful things that happened with me early on is, uh, you know, when my life was, you know, very much what, what I call in, in the in train wreck land, uh, because uh, well because I was young and and. Uh, Many of my students were also my friends. You know, they sat me down and they said, Craig, you know, things are like you, you really love, you know, when you're up there teaching and we have a wonderful time in your class, but, you know, you, these things are incongruent, is basically what they yeah. said. Yeah. And, you, you know, I can remember, like, they, they kind of harassed, I call it harassment, they harassed me a little bit and I defended myself a little bit. But I, but I realized, I was like, you know what, you guys are right. And it was, it was really helpful 
that my students came forward and, and they said this to me. They looked me d directly in the eye and they said, you got to clean your life up, Craig. And, and it, it really touched me. And mm. it, was, it was radically helpful mm. for them to come forward mm. and, and speak to me. And it was funny because mm. uh, I was talking with one of them today and, and there was this third person who came up and they said, well, Craig, how's your life going? Because the last time I talked to this person was you know, maybe eight years ago, and it was when my life was pretty messy. And, you know, the, the, the good friend of mine said, oh, his life's actually really wonderful, and it's really clear, and it's simple, and things yes. have calmed down, and there's peace there, and there's freedom there. Mm -hmm. And it's supportive of the teaching, it's supportive of the community, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a wonderful thing not to be involved in this train wreck, and it's a wonderful thing to have students that will come forward and speak to you and say, hey, you know, maybe you need to look at this. And I think this is a really valuable thing that, that as a teacher to be, to be radically open to feedback, mm -hmm. to criticism, yeah. to, um, you know, to just constructive feedback is yeah. really helpful. And if we're looking at, well, what does it mean to be free and human? Okay, so I'm open, you know, I'm willing to hear, I'm willing to listen, I'm mm -hmm. willing to grow. There's humility there. Yeah. These are things that make, yeah. you, you know, it makes a very supportive community. But if we play this other game, like Caverly was describing, where it's, you know, it's a person and they're on, they're on their own island, they're untouchable, mm -hmm. you can't give feedback to the mm -hmm. teacher. There's this, you know, inner circle of students defending the guru and, not letting you speak with him or her, and that's that can, that can lead to a very mm. neurotic, uh, you know, community. And and oftentimes we we see that those tend to be the communities mm. that have the most struggle and and the greatest shadow. But it's it's hard to have a big shadow if you know if if there is that open feedback mm -hmm. within within the community with the students, and they can come yeah. up and say hey, you know, I think you're a little off here, or what you said, I don't know if that's, you know, really you know, spot on. Another and source for that kind of feedback that might seem really simplistic, but I think it, it, it's something that every teacher should think about, or every spiritual leader should think about. What circle of friends do you have? Yeah. Are they all your students? Or are you just a regular Joe Soap? Are you yeah. just a regular Jane to a group of people? Yeah who can call you out, who can yeah. get annoyed with you. And there is no power play at all. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're a teacher or a spiritual leader who doesn't have regular, normal friends, then you have to ask why. You have to ask why. Because there is an absence of accountability. There's an absence of connection with, with the regular value system of of uh, transparency mm -hmm. and openness and are you able to have regular relationships because if you're not able to have regular relationships that that dysfunction if you're living in a western world and outside of an ashram that dysfunction is going to come up and out and some pain mm -hmm. is going to happen as a result because mm -hmm. you're not taking care of your own humanity your own need for community and for like for peers you're always on a pedestal and that's not sustainable because you have to have some form of, we all have to have some form of a mirror, a mirror of how to function in a regular world, in regular life, you know? Yeah. Um, well, and that's one of the things we're trying to do with the APSD is yeah. to create this sense of, of community and, you know, and a willingness to talk with each other. So we're not, you know, just all these individual teachers hanging out, you know, in our own little communities in our own worlds where everyone's telling us we're right all the time and there's this perfected state of consciousness that you know so and so lives in but that, that this willingness to come together to see each other's humanness to see each other's divinity to support each other support in our each high, other in okay. our highest and also to, to provide support for like hey look I'm really I'm really struggling mm. in this way or that way mm. or in all these ways and Mm. You know, I need some friends here, and I think it can be a beautiful thing. And we're coming from a couple of thousand years of the guru is beyond reproach. Right. Yeah. So look at the change in the culture we're trying to bring right. about. Yeah. So of course there's going to be backlash. Mm -hmm. Of course mm -hmm. there, because what we're saying is like yeah. taboo. Yeah. And you say when you say 
we're trying to bring about this change in the culture. The culture is changing. Yes. Yes. And, yes. Uh, and we're not doing it. We, no, we're responding we to the change. Characters. That's, yeah. You know, exactly. It, there's, exactly. And people are universally feeling the need for something of this nature, mm -hmm. and yeah, we're just trying to we're just trying to ride a wave. We're that's, riding that's, a wave yeah. that's cresting yeah. anyway. Yeah. Uh, and trying to articulate it, give a form to it, give some words to it, yeah. so that you know. Yeah. It yeah. Can be helpful for people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we, uh, we have to keep reminding, uh, using our terminology carefully mm. to make it perfectly clear mm. that we are not some kind of governing body and have no mm -hmm. aspirations to be. And no. uh, we have neither the wisdom or the authority to pass judgment on anybody. Mm. We're just trying to enliven in the, in the sort of spiritual community mm. of which we're a part uh, a, an appreciation of this stuff and, and uh, you know, uh, an articulation of what is and is not appropriate that hopefully we can mm -hmm. more or less agree upon all of us it seems to me that it's the creation of another type of sangha yeah it's another Indeed. it's another sangha another that honors the collective that honors what's larger than maybe your individual sangha or, or what you call your individual sangha yeah there must um, be some universal values mm -hmm. you know and maybe some sanghas are going to be a little bit more off on this mm -hmm. end of the spectrum and others off on that and others yeah. won't want to have anything to do with it because they yeah. really like orgies or something. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Fine. If that's what you want to belong to, then yeah, there's you... space for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it has to be evolving because because we we've got learner plates on. You know, mm -hmm. we, we, that's an Irish thing. <laughs> Is that your, like first, a, your first two years of driving, you, drive you have car, to yeah. yeah, you have to yeah. have a symbol on the car to say that you know you're you're still learning. Uh -huh. um, so we we have to be learning all the time. If we're not willing to grow, well, then that's shadow. That's shadow. Mm -hmm. There it is. You know, and, and if there is more blind spots that you see or you don't see in yourself, it doesn't matter. It's about having the availability and the transparency to say, yeah, of course, there can be hidden shadows within me. Of course, the work can still continue. And if we can create that, you know, um, in ourselves and spread that a little bit, so that there's that openness, that transparency, that willingness to have a genuine effort to walk our talk. And if we can continue to do that and understand how others talk and walk is very different to us, but where can we meet and where can we support each other so that we don't get locked into being one type of a, um, I don't know, a supportive body, sure. but can be flexible and organic enough to be inclusive. That, that would be great. I don't know what that would look like, mm -hmm. but it would be great, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. to try to do well, that. If this thing survives and thrives, mm. it's probably going to look very different in five years than it does now. I hope so. This is just a real so. fledgling little, yeah. you know, attempt. Yeah. And we really hope that um, with, as it grows, there will be this sort of collaboration and ebb and flow of, of Opinion, opinions and information and, and input and so on uh, among anyone who cares to be involved and that that sort of mutual collaboration will uh, really en enable it to evolve. We, we hope it never becomes um, ossified. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I, it's apparent to me that, um, you know, we're not going to resolve in this conversation <laughs> whether there should be a two-year moratorium on relationships. And we've had so many conversations about this. So many. <laughs> Any such thing. Yeah. And that's, that's fine. I mean, yeah. th th this is the direction this conversation is taken. We're just sort of painting with, a broad, yeah. stro with broad strokes here. And giving a sample, I suppose, of the kind of dialogues that we have and, and yeah. no yeah. resolution yeah, well, comes. But we keep coming back to the drawing well, board and talking about it again. And, and well, the, yeah. the important thing is, 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 you know, to study, you know, to study ethics, to grapple with them, to, to see, you know, mm. what's true, what makes sense. I mean, one of the beautiful things about, about studying ethics before you, you step into really messy ethical situations is you can, you can form an idea of, okay, how, how will I respond to this when it comes forward? I mean, one of the things that I see the organization being really helpful for is, is for young students or, 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 I'm sorry, young teachers or new teachers who are coming forward mm. who maybe have never studied ethics before, who, who don't know, it. well, what is a dual relationship and, and why would that be messy or why, you know, how could I get in trouble with being friends with my students or becoming romantically involved? And it would be much better to study that, to understand it, to sit with that, these questions for hours and hours, 
before you find yourself as the head of some community and then the community falling you know, under some incredible messy nightmare where tremendous pain has been caused because one didn't take the time to first study this, mm -hmm. to examine, yeah. you know, how would I respond? How should I respond? What, what makes sense? You know, how, you know, how do I professionally navigate these things? Yeah. And I think it's something that, you know, as we, we know, it's just, it's radically lacking. Yeah. You know, Rick, you know, has brought this up a lot that you, we would assume that most spiritual teachers have really strong ethics and have a strong high moral high ground, you know, for the place they live and teach from. But if you look at history, yeah. <laughs> yeah. if you look at recent history, yeah. you know, even this, this last summer, our email boxes have filled up mm -hmm. with scandal after mm -hmm. scandal. After, and it's mm -hmm. like, yeah. oh boy, you know, and these were yeah. teachers who were mm -hmm. high levels of realization and yeah. it didn't, yeah. It, ended, it ended in a really messy way, but the yeah. sense of if we educate ourselves, if, mm -hmm. we, if we sit with these questions and deeply inquire, mm -hmm. you know, then we can, mm -hmm. uh, in, a, mm -hmm. in a greater sense, serve our communities. And boundary, boundaries are learned. Yeah, How to work with power is learned. Yeah. We need to learn these things. There are skills that, that we Absolutely. need. And, and to, you know, acknowledge our humanity and that... Sure. These skills don't just come down the track. It's very rare that that happens, yeah. you know, that the, the perfection of humanity, you know, is directly in line with the movement of consciousness. Yeah. Yeah, that's very a rare, rare, rare thing. Very, 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 very yeah. rare, can yeah. I say? Yeah, a lot of myths, a lot of myths, yeah. you know, teach it that way, but yeah. in reality, yeah. it's, it's rarely... No, it well, doesn't roll like that. And the word enlightenment has been associated with saintliness, you know, all yeah. these enlightened... People and so the, the the implication is that there's a tight correlation between a high level of consciousness and moral behavior. Mm -hmm. And um, but from what rarely, I've seen, rarely the case. Yeah, it's a very yeah. stretchy rubber band. There may be some mm -hmm. correlation, yeah. and eventually it gets pulled along. But boy, it can really stretch far. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, that doesn't yeah it doesn't take into account how much practice is involved in. Um, being able to have your actions continually be refined such that yeah. they're reflections of your deepest and greatest understanding. Yes. Yeah. It, it doesn't acknowledge that refinement process yes. mm -hmm. um, to assume that, you know, it's just like, oh, the lights came on, so. Yes, we're good yeah. to go. Yeah, and yeah. it's much nicer to do that refinement work, you know. So, 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 so within a space, within a supportive community, yeah. mm -hmm. before the nightmares begin to unfold or the shadow yeah. starts to become unpacked, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. to, to be able to do that in a supportive community, you know, to me, that's a, a tremendous gift. Yeah. And yeah. that's what we're trying to bring forward is this sense of support and community and a willingness to, to together examine these questions. And again, like what Rick was saying, we're not, you know, some judging authority that is the, the furthest from thing for my nature or our nature is to to judge but, yeah. but rather to explore these questions and to see this as as just a part of the spiritual practice as mm -hmm. a part of the path to me is a beautiful yeah. thing mm. so this is a this will be an ongoing conversation you know? <laughs> yes and um we could probably make a, a video a week and, and <laughs> explore different aspects of it and um, still not come to an agreement <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I guess we should really conclude and say stay sure. tuned I mean it's, it's getting yeah. late here it's quarter of 11 and some of us are on East Coast time or Midwest time and we have our panel discussion tomorrow and everything so we want to be fresh for that but we just wanted to make something and get it out yeah. there and put something on the website and stimulate some thought and discussion um so we hope we've done that and uh, appreciate your, your watching this and yes we could yes. if we had the energy and perhaps some more refreshments we could probably go on for another few hours <laughs> this guy are, could. don't give him anything to drink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway thanks for this thanks for watching and um yeah, please you. stay tuned and and Get involved in whatever way you yeah. like in the Association of Professional Spiritual Teachers and, and go to the website professional spiritual teachers.org. Professional spiritual teachers.org and just explore around and it, it'll be a work in progress and we hope to we hope you'll find yeah. it very useful uh, over the, the coming years. Yep. May the next Buddha be Sangha. <laughs>